Hello everyone and welcome back. Now in the previous video, we just covered setting up a very basic Ruby uh, work environment, if you want to think of it like that. In this one, I want to actually take a look at writing our first pieces of code. So if you're not familiar and you just want a absolute blank canvas to start from, all we really need to do here is uh, wherever you decide to run your project, just right click and click new file. And we'll just call this main.rb. This could be anywhere on your computer. Just make sure that uh, depending on where you're trying to run this, I, either you have like Visual Studio code open to that location, uh, or if you're using like your terminal window, uh, that you have that in the same location, like right here. This is not the same location as the one that I'm working out of. Like I'm in E2. This is in E1, so I actually have to move up and then CD into E2 to make sure that I'm in the same spot. And now if I type something like LL, uh, that'll show me that I have my main.rb right here. If I was on Windows, I think I'd have to type DIR to see what's in here, and we can see that just returns main.rb, which is the name of this file. If I change this to like test, and then I type DIR, that'll give us test.rb. So just make sure that whatever you name it, that you're in the same location. Uh, and then when you go to run your program, you're running something like Ruby and then the name of your file, which in this case is main.rb. Uh, but of course I don't have any code in here yet. So let's see how we can get something to appear over here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and close this and move this over because uh, we don't need to see that browser window right now. So in order to get something to appear over here, we need to use that same command we had in that opening file I had in the previous video, this puts command. And unfortunately, or fortunately, Ruby tries to keep everything incredibly human readable. So while other programming languages, which you might become exposed to in the future, might have something like a print command where you do something like print uh, and then hello world, this uh, is gonna be the same thing as over here, just doing hello world. The main structure kind of stays the same uh, except my spelling gets progressively worse with each iteration. Uh, that said, Ruby is also flexible enough that if you come from a language where you've already been using uh, parentheses around whatever you're trying to print, you can still do that. That'll still work. And we can go ahead and comment this out with a uh, shift three for the uh, pound symbol or the hashtag or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but uh, this will now no longer run. It just allows us to see it here uh, sort of as like a note to the programmer themselves. So now we're just running this, this first line. We can also just take this and hit control X to cut it if we wanna go that route. Just make sure whenever you do a change like that, if this icon exists up here in VS Code, you wanna hit control S to save or go over to like file and click save if that's more your, your cup of tea. Uh, but now we have this puts hello world. If we click this, we can see down here that prints hello world to the output. Or over here, if we run this, we'll also see hello world appear. So that is effectively the same thing as doing this with just a puts hello world. It allows us to type fewer characters and still get those results. Unfortunately, that's about where the convenience ends. We can't do something like this uh, because now we're getting into some weird territory where the Ruby programming language doesn't really know what these uh, symbols mean. So here you can see it says like undefined method world, uh, which is just its way of saying like, I don't know what these mean because if it's not inside of quotes like this, the programming language doesn't really know if you're trying to use like just the words, hello world, or if these are like some, some super secret keywords in your program that mean, you know, go take over the world or whatever. That's why we use these quotation marks. We use these to just represent a, I think it's like a sequence of characters, uh, just as a way of saying like th print this sequence of characters or use the sequence of characters just literally as they are as like a way of displaying the information, like maybe to a user or something. Now these are technically called strings. Uh, so if you see either a double or a single quoted thing like this, that's going to be a string. So we can do this. We can print both versions of these and these will both have the same behavior. If we run this, we can just see hello world gets printed twice or it gets puts twice. 
Uh, although personally, I'd prefer the word print because uh, it makes more sense to me, but that might just be because I have uh, programming brain rot at this point <laughs> and the things that I'm used to just make sense to me. Uh, maybe this is your preferred way. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. But uh, now let's go ahead and let's talk about some variables. So what I mean by variable is um, sometimes you have something like this where you want to like print something multiple times, or maybe you have, uh, let's say you have like a customer uh, file where you have all your customer information and you want to just only be working with like Dave's name, right? So maybe Dave is like your, your key customer and you're just really worried about his experience. In that case, we can just say Dave uh, or like Dave's name, something like that is equal to Dave. We can also just change this to be like a customer name. And the convention in Ruby is to use uh, an underscore to separate words like this for a variable name. You could also just leave this as like C name. Although for me, I don't like this because it's not super readable. So we can also just say first, first name is equal to Dave. Now, in, in this case, it's gonna be giving us uh, a couple of errors here because this is a unused variable. Now, this is something that uh, we don't really need to worry about right now. It's still gonna work. It's just upset because we uh, we're not technically doing things the proper way, but we're learning. We'll worry about doing things properly uh, further down the line. So we have this, this Dave character. What we can do now is we can come down here and we can actually just put the first name which is gonna give us Dave when we go to print this. So if we run the Ruby main.rb, we can put this over here. We'll see Dave appears in our console. We can do the same thing if we click this uh, run code button. It'll also just give us Dave down here, whatever floats your boat. So this is sort of the magic of programming, or I guess this is where the illusion of magic gets shattered. Pretty much everything is just you coming up with some arbitrary logic like this. Uh, and then stringing it together, no pun intended. So we have Dave as the first name. Maybe we wanna say, hello, Dave. In that case, we can come down here and we can say puts, and we can do hello. And then there's a couple different ways we can do this. The first one is we can just do hello plus first name. This will give us some interesting behavior. I'm actually going to highlight these three lines right here and hit control and the question mark key as control and I think it's forward slash is what people call that. Uh, that's just going to comment all of these out so that these are now just uh, lines of code that only the developers can see, only you and I can see it. The computer just totally ignores these lines. It doesn't care what's on a line if it's following the uh, hash symbol. So let's go ahead and let's run this. If we run this now, we'll see down here uh, that we get hello Dave printed out. Similarly, if we run it over here, this is why I like running it over here, just because it's a bit easier to keep track of everything. We'll see hello Dave appears, but these three lines don't. That might not be the only thing you've noticed though. The question might arise, how do we get a space between a hello and Dave? Because right here, we technically have a space before the plus and after the plus. And the reason is the programming language doesn't really care about any of these spaces. Like I could do something like this, and I could then run this and you'll see we get the same result. This is, this is referred to as white space, which is just a fancy way of saying like the computer doesn't care if you have 20 spaces between the string and the plus and the variable, or if you have no spaces at all. If we run this, we still get the same result. So obviously doing it that way isn't going to change what our output is. What we can instead do is we can have this hello. We can put a space right here after the hello inside of the quotation marks because anything inside the quotation marks is just considered another character that it should literally print out. So the programming language now knows, okay, this is something that the user or the, the programmer cares about. So I need to make sure that I keep whatever is going on in here. If we now run this, we'll see hello Dave appears. Similarly, we can come in here and we can say, I don't know, a bunch of spaces, go ahead and run this again. And we can see hello Dave appears here. Obviously, this isn't how you would do your actual formatting. Like you wouldn't do this in an Excel spreadsheet uh, because this would be pretty ugly to look at, but you get the idea. We can also do it from the other side. We can come up here to Dave and we can give Dave a bunch of spaces before his name and then we can print this. And now you can see Dave has a bunch of spaces here even though there's no space inside of this hello. That said, 
you do also want to be careful because if you're over here and you're trying to do these spaces outside of the quotes, that's just going to get ignored because that's not the same thing as doing it inside of the quotation marks. Similarly, you want to make sure that if you have a double quote, you want to also have a matching double quote over here. Or if you start with a single quote, you want to make sure you end with a single quote as well uh, because it treats those two as two different uh, quotation marks. So like a good example of this might be if I have, I don't know, uh, let's do double, oops, let's do some double quotes and we'll do Dave's name. We can do this with the apostrophe right here. And if we put a space after the hello, if we now print this, we'll see hello Dave's name. That works just fine. But watch what happens when we try and switch these double quotes for single quotes. It starts with a, a single quote. We then have the word Dave. And then we have another single quote, which means the programming language itself thinks that this is just a string on its own. And then it doesn't know what to do with the rest of these. It might be waiting for you to do like a plus and then another parentheses over here so that, or another parentheses, another quotation mark over here uh, so that it matches up, but that's really not what you want. So if you want to use the apostrophe inside of a string with like double quotes like this, you wanna make sure uh, that you're always using the other quotation mark uh, for the string itself. Now there's other ways to do this, but for now I think that's pretty much all you need to worry about. At this point, a lot of this might be confusing. It usually is. I've taught people how to program multiple times before and it can be pretty overwhelming just sort of trying to wrap your head around variables, printing, and, and all of these, these spacing issues. So what I would suggest you to try and do is to first just follow along with the videos, type what I have, then try and mess around with it. See what you can do to uh, maybe break the program. Remember, you're saving, you can always go back, and there's not a lot of code here that you can't just restart. But I've personally found that the best way to learn is to just try breaking a few things. Like what happens if I come in here I put a space after first and name. Now, of course, it's helping me out here by saying like, hey, this was unexpected. It's expecting something else. Now, what it's expecting here is not helpful. This, this does not tell me what it actually wants. But if we come over here and we run this, we can see, well, something went wrong. Not really sure what went wrong, but now I can at least come in here and try and mess around with it until we get something that's working again. We can then go ahead and run this. This works just fine. And what I found is when I was first learning how to program uh, was that breaking things in this way causes me to associate this type of broken with this type of error, which means if I ever run into this type of error over here, I can go, okay, you know, historically when I've run into this, it's because I typed something wrong, right? Like we can see right here, there's a first and a uh, name right here and there's a bunch of squiggly lines. So there's probably something wrong in this block of code. Let's just come over here and then, oh, I see I have an extra space right there. And then we can go ahead and fix that. We can then run it again and it'll work just fine. So I would suggest just playing around with these things as you go through it, because at the end of the day, you're not going to learn how to code just by watching me run the program 20 times. You're also not gonna learn how to code just by following exactly what I'm doing. So I would just take a step back sometimes while you're watching these videos. It doesn't even have to be my videos. It can be other videos. And then saying, okay, this person did X, Y, or Z. Maybe I want to also have like a last name here. Like maybe we have Dave and then he has a last name of, uh, sure, let's go with Johnson. So <laughs> let's, let's get rid of the apostrophe though. <laughs> so we can say hello plus first name plus uh, and then maybe we could do last name. Now GitHub Copilot here is giving me some suggestions. That's the AI trying to help out. Well, let's just go ahead and let's try the last name first. And now if we run this and if I hit control L, it'll clear this console. We can also come over here and click this clear output and we can lock it so that it scrolls down for us. If we now run this, we can see hello, Dave Johnson. If we press play over here, we can also see hello, Dave Johnson. So that's clearly not working. But what we do know is that we can either put a space here inside of a string, or we can put a space here inside of our variable. So if we try this, we can put a space after Dave because we want it between uh, Dave and Johnson. We 
we can then go ahead and run this. We can see, hello, Dave Johnson. The other thing we could try and do, if that doesn't work for us, is we could say uh, maybe down here we have first name plus last name. We can also do plus and just include another plus where it's just an empty string that has one space character inside of it. If we now run this, we get the same results where we get first name plus a space plus the last name, which is how I try to think of it. The other thing we could try and do, maybe we don't want to do that, we can just say, well, let's make a full name. A full name might be equal to the first name plus the space plus the last name. And what you'll notice here is this full name is actually the same thing we just had right here. So what we could actually do is just take this, highlight it, hit Control X, because we know it works. This is what you would call refactoring, which is just a fancy way of saying cleaning up your, your previous mess. We can come up here and we can say the full name is equal to whatever we had down here. And now we can just say hello full name. And now if we run this, we'll see hello Dave Johnson, just like before. So now you can see we're using previously declared variables in our current variable. Now, the important thing to note here is first name and last name both appear before the full name. If I hold the Alt key and move up with the arrow keys, which just allows me to change the order of the lines here. And now if I try to use full name before we tell it what first name and last name are, and then we run this, we'll see we have an undefined local variable or method first name because the first error it runs into is when it tries to run this, it sees the first name that's undefined. It's a variable or method name. It tells us first name. So we can see first name right here is being used before it's defined. We can see right here, uh, useless assignment, useless assignment, assigned but never used. Uh, although it is used, it's just used before it's assigned. So instead we want to just hold Alt and the arrow keys, move these up and that'll go ahead and that'll clear that up for us. And now if we run this again and I click lock, we press play, we can see hello Dave Johnson appears again, or I can just change this to my name, something like that. We can run this and we can see hello Dean DeHart. Now, the nice thing about this is we don't have to come down here and figure out where all of these, these strings are coming from, where all these names are coming from. We only have to change it in one place. And then every time we want to use the full name, we have this logic up here and it'll automatically get updated. If we say like Tim, uh, and then I don't know, Apple, you save this and press play. We can see Tim Apple appears just the same because we're only needing to change it in one place. That's not something I would worry about now. It's more so it's nice to have if you're writing code, especially when you're starting out where you only have to change things in one place. But don't be afraid if you're, you know, doing something fancy uh, where you're trying to print out a bunch of stuff. If when you're first starting out, you end up writing like the string Tim 10 times, then you got to go back and fix it. That's totally acceptable uh, as part of like the initial learning is to just sit there and say, OK, you know, uh, I don't really know how to make this clean. So instead, I'll just I'll make it messy. I'll make it dirty the first time and then maybe I'll come back to it in the future and I'll clean it up then. But for now, I think this is a good place to stop. I just really wanted to focus on some of these key aspects because these are things that are going to repeatedly come up, especially when we start you know, working with numbers. Uh, you're going to have things that just need to be formatted a specific way. You can pretty much always apply these same principles, just making sure that you have the right order and then you're putting spacing between stuff. For now, thank you so much for watching. and I will see you in the next one.